Julie Bo Show. Today is Wednesday, July 3rd, 2019. I'm in my home in Pomona, Kansas. I actually said it out loud, Eric. That's my way of letting people know I'm not afraid. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And um, Eric is in his truck in Idaho. That's right. So we are getting ready. Eric, thanks so much for doing another podcast with me. It's a real pleasure, Julie. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So I'm really excited about today. I have mixed emotion, but overall it's excitement. I've been trying to cast out a little bit of fear energy that's come up. Sometimes it's mine and sometimes it's those from the other side of the veil, I think, in anticipation of what we're going to talk about today. Titling this podcast, Exposing and Revealing, and what I mean by that is exposing darkness, but we're also going to expose or reveal a little bit of truth. They go hand in hand, because what you do is you expose and reveal the darkness, and then you replace it with truth and light. This is a technique that I use with my clients every day, and that I use in my life, and Eric's been working on it with his system as well, right, Eric? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. We call it removing the bad programs, <laughs> this is one technique, and replacing with healthy programs or healthy ideas and bringing light in. So I'm going to use a few terms because, as I mentioned to you guys before, these podcasts can serve as um, like an energy session. So I'm going to use some specific terms that I use sometimes with my clients to just kind of bring more of this to light and hopefully it'll teach some of you guys some techniques that you can use as well. Expose and reveal all darkness on every level, layer, realm, and dimension. We expose any and all hidden energies, including those that are cloaked. Otherwise hiding, including those that are using mechanisms, devices, machines, programs, or any other unseen, unfelt, unheard, or undetected energies, including frequencies that have or will be used against us in response to this session. We ask for invisibility shields for Eric and I and for those on the light side on both sides of the veil as we attend this session and do this podcast. Remove any and all dark portals, close, cap, and dissolve those dark portals in our energy systems and energy bodies. Heal our energy bodies. Remove shunts, mechanisms, devices. Help us replace any and all darkness that's ready to come on this level and layer with light and truth. Infuse light into the crown chakras. Using the flaming sword of Christ, the white light, blue light, and violet light, we ask for the sacred geometry, numbers, letters, symbols, music, any and all, including essential oils, bot flower remedies, or homeopathic remedies that we need at this time to help us accomplish today's podcast. Again, this podcast is a session. So those of you that are listening to this podcast are agreeing, essentially, to have an energy session. Some of you will have already been feeling the energy shift around you. I want you to pay attention to what's going on in your mind, heart, body, and soul. See if you can detect the energy that's within you and surrounding you. Today's purpose is to expose real darkness, like I said, and some specific things that I've seen in vision for years, and specifically in the last five years, related to uh, what I see with everything from breakoffs within the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that we've had from apostates uh, and those factions or groups that are still in hiding or working under the guise of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints but are pretending to be someone that they're not. I'm calling out any and all wolves in sheep clothing. Fraction groups throughout anywhere from Napa, Idaho, Greater Rexburg area, the Salt Lake Valley, Utah Valley, San Pete County, Colorado, Arizona, including Snowflake, Boise, Idaho. I'm specifically naming these places because you guys know who you are, and I want you to know that I see you. 
I've had many of these groups try to contact me in the last five years to get information out of me to use and abuse or to otherwise rope me in. Many of these factions or groups or trolls that are on the internet have tried to spread, spread lies about me, which have led in part to my excommunication. I stand as a witness and testify, of you, uh, testify to you that I'm innocent in the accusations that have been made, made falsely against me at church headquarters and thereby, thereby by my state president. I stand by that. I am not apostate. In fact, I'm here to call out the apostates. And in part, my excommunication actually has provided a form of protection for me so that I can do this without fear of repercussion anymore from church headquarters and those that are within the ranks of the church, both male and female, who have been conspiring, some of them conspiring against the prophet of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and others within the Quorum of the Twelve. This will come to fruition in the next several years, as you guys will see that the truth I speak will unfold. We've got groups everywhere from wealthy businessmen in Utah that are connected to the church headquarters, that are doing projects with them, PR firms, marketing firms, and others who contract out with the church. We have members, members and non-members who work on our temples, who are uh, not doing good things in our temples, everything from the construction level on up to participating in satanic ritual abuses in some of our temples. I expose and reveal this at this time and essentially could say I'm calling you out. You think you're getting away with it and there's at least one person who is mortal on this planet who sees what you're doing. I stand by the truth that I know, which is that I have a mission to be a warning voice on several levels, layers, realms, and dimensions, both on this planet and throughout the universe. And I testify to you that I work on behalf of the Savior, Jesus Christ, even our Redeemer. I work on behalf of Father, who has commissioned me to come to the earth this time, to condescend and to help fulfill his purposes. I hope you hear me say that I have no fear of the adversary, because I put my complete trust in Father in Heaven, and in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who, again, I testify, is our Redeemer. They have a beautiful plan they're orchestrating. My mission is just one piece of the puzzle. But it's significant enough that it will awaken some of you who have been doubting some things about me, and you will come to understand at some point in time when you are supposed to awaken that we have some things coming, some of which I've warned about and some of yet I have not yet disclosed. There are both members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints as well as non-members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who have been, are, and will have continuing revelation, both of sight, hearing, and feeling, various forms of dreams and visions, as well as visitations from the other side of the veil. I'm not alone in this. We all have our unique missions. We made premortal covenants to come to help awaken the souls on both sides of the veil and specifically those in this celestial realm to the day at hand. We are in the last world of this eternal round prior to the Lord's second coming. I witness and testify to you that he is and will come, that he is the savior of this world and many other worlds in multiple locations and multiple places in the universe. He is our King of Kings. He does and will rule and reign, and he will take his rightful place on this planet, no matter what Satan tries to do, no matter what those who work with him, including Cain, or any of the other Council of Twelve on this side of the veil, or the Council of Twelve on the other, or the Council of 18 or 24, or 72 or 144. Something I want you to bring to your mind is that it's been testified by living prophets and apostles in past days that at one point in time some point in time in the future the church of the firstborn will be started the remnant will gather and they will go into New Jerusalem to prepare the way for the Savior's return I witness and testify to you that this is true and that there are breakoff groups that are developing right now within the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who are being given false revelation about the church of the firstborn 
some of them are taking active roles knowingly that they are deceiving other people and some of them are just being deceived by false spirits. I witness and testify to you that it is not time for the Church of the Firstborn to start. And if there's anybody talking to you about that that has started a church or a group in secret or otherwise, they are being deceived by false spirits. False spirits who pretend to be John the Beloved or Enoch, false spirits who pretend to be Christ or Mary Magdalene or anyone else, Peter, James, and John. If they're coming to you saying that they can bless you with translation, that they have ordinances for translation or second anointings or second comforters, and they are not directly tied to President Nelson or working in the temples of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints related to a second comforter, which is or excuse me, second anointing, which is different than second comfort. Or second comfort is when you actually see the Savior. Second anointing is an ordinance that on occasion can be administered in the in the temple, but it's very rare. There are a handful of cases. There are groups that have come to my attention that have contacted me in the last five years that have tried to get me involved uh, with blessings, claiming that John or other people have come to them, Peter, John, they they're being told that they are the reincarnate versions of these individuals. Multiple probations is a true doctrine. At some point in time, Eric and I will be talking more about multiple probations. I witness and testify to you that both Peter, James, and John, all three of them, are not on this planet. John is a translated being. He does administer. He works on this planet, but he is not a mortal. Peter and James are not mortals, they are on the other side of the veil. They have been mortal before, they are not mortal now. If you come across someone who claims they are Peter, or James, or Hiram, there's also another individual that was brought to my attention about five years ago, who claims he is Hiram reincarnate. He is a false spirit, he is a false prophet. I know who Hiram Smith is, and it is not that individual. Same with Noah, Gabriel, Michael, or any of the other archangels that are disclosing themselves to groups of people or individuals claiming that they have special knowledge or understanding to be passed down. One of the adversary's biggest tools is that he comes to people, uh, works on their ego and pride, makes them feel like they're important with quote unquote some kind of special mission. And you guys are going to say, well, that's hypocritical because of what I say about my mission. I stand by my mission, you guys. And yet there are false spirits talking. They, they try to talk to me, too. One of the reasons that I know I speak truth is because the false spirits were some of the first ones that started waking me up to my mission. And I would ask the Lord and then he would send a true messenger. There are different ways to discern true messengers from false messengers. Everything from voice intonation to facial expressions. Now, there are some people that watch the radio show with Steve Mitten with Eric and I, and it's gotten back to me that uh, some people on the internet said I looked dark. There are reasons for that. I was in the presence of dark spirits who clouded the camera. There was bad lighting there. I want you to look in my eyes when you watch that video. I want you to feel the energy. There are false beliefs that have been passed down in generations regarding everything from psychics to future telling to energy work, and that's for a reason. And so those issues that you guys have, again, I'll tell you the same thing that I've told from the very beginning. The only voice you can trust is the Lord's. you got to take it to him. You can hear my words. You can watch me on video. You can come to the classes or hear this podcast. Ultimately... The way you discern truth is to take your questions to the Lord. If you're not getting an answer, then you need to ask different questions, or it's just not time for you to know that, because that knowledge makes you accountable. If there's something that I've said in a radio show, a podcast, on my blog, my books, whatever, and it doesn't resonate, either it's not supposed to because it's not time for you to wake up to that, it's not part of your plan, you have deceiving spirits, or you're not ready to be accountable and the Lord knows that so you're not going to receive a witness of that truth until you are ready to be accountable 
Otherwise, it's to your condemnation and to mine. And I mean that. If I share something with you and you're not ready for it, but the Spirit witnesses to you and you're not ready, it's not going to witness to you until you're ready for it. Because otherwise, I condemn myself as well. Does that make sense, Eric? Yeah, it does. Yeah, well said. Um, there's some serious stuff here. Obviously, we know there's some, some very clear apostates like Denver Snuffer and John Dillon and some of those, those others that have gone the unattacked. I'll tell you this much. I've had more, more people from Denver Snuffer try to contact me clear back five years ago as soon as they went public. I am not in any way associated with him or John Dillon oh, okay. or Kate Kelly, any of the ones that are known apostates that have fought against the church. When I expose and reveal truth, you guys, I am not fighting against the church. I love the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. As the Quorum of the Twelve works in unison as a majority, I believe much of what they're doing, even in upholding my excommunication, is for my protection. And the Lord has made it very clear to me that the First Presidency, as they work together, are doing good things. That doesn't mean we're not corrupt and we don't have men's theories and philosophies coming into play here. You will not hear me fight against the church because I'm on the Lord's side and this is still his church. It's just been infiltrated and corrupt. And there's a difference. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Some people are having a hard time discerning that. Um, I still stand by what I said. We have satanic ritual abuse going on in our church and every other church on this planet because that's the day and age we live in. Mm -hmm. People have asked what satanic ritual abuse versus sexual abuse or any other kind of abuse. It's degrees of abuse, levels of consciousness and outright deceit and the rituals that go with the abuse that make it satanic, satanic ritual abuse. So they are actually performing ritualistic behaviors um, they are doing initiations there are certain things that are required of them certain types of things that they do everything from sacrificing animals to children and when I mean sacrificing I really mean killing them eating their hearts and doing other things making kids do those things or and often if not always what comes with that is sexual abuse tied to it they will dress like the savior and and reenact the crucifixion and all kinds of really disgusting things i've seen it for years you guys i've known people for years and i will tell you i have clients who have grown up in this who have been exposed to it it is painful for me to tell you about it but anybody that wants to understand why i have been excommunicated and why there are groups of people all over this planet trying to shut me down and why satan would come to threaten to kill me more times than I can tell you. I'll tell you one of the biggest reasons because he does not want this exposed. He is building his army on the other side of the veil. He continues to try to build it here on this planet. And I am here in part on my mission to put a stop to it. So that was fun. <laughs> Don't stop there. Keep going. Can I ask you a bit more about some of those groups that you mentioned, Julie? Can we get a little more specific with some of those? Sure. Eric, you can ask anything you want. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you. If I don't have permission to say it because I don't want to disclose too much for my own safety, um, I also don't want a lawsuit from the church or from any other wealthy businessman who's participating in this, and they know who are, they know who they are. Mm -hmm. I will also expose Underground Railroad, the individual who started Underground Railroad, not Dark. He's associated with Darks who are actually using Underground Railroad to traffic and hide and cover their tracks and one day I give my word you guys that once I am translated I will spend the rest of my days on this planet fighting those traffickers to rescue as many as we can on both sides of the veil mm -hmm. know thine enemy mm. I just have to wait until I'm translated fully before I can disclose certain information so that I don't um, reveal too much about what I know before you know, because they can still kill me, basically. I have to wait until I get to where they can't um, harm me more than they already are. Mm -hmm. So, Okay, any other organizations or, you know... Be well, you know, there's crime families all over, multiple crime families, everything from 
Italian mafia, Russian mafia, Chinese mafia, Korean mafia. We've got those well-known crime families. But what, what's scary to me, Eric, more than those families who are out and out in your face crime families that have been there generations since Cain, is the ones that are cloaked and hidden that came to this planet pretending to be on Christ's side. So he knew all along he could tell who was on his side or not. They came, got bodies, and they have been working for the adversary since they got here. And, and some of them in previous probations and some of them in previous creations. You take the Hillary Clintons. She's a multi-creation dark. She's been dark for four worlds. Right? She made certain contracts with the adversary to get a body to come here. This gets into very deep doctrine and very deep um, plans by the adversary. But I want you guys to think about war. If you were in war as a Luciferian, what would you do to put people on the earth? You would promise them all kinds of things. Money, fame, popularity, control. So you look at the world leaders, and that helps you understand at this point in time where we're in history, where some of those darks are, where they come into play, where the Obamas, the Trudeaus, the Kushners, right? It lets you know. And there's degrees of darkness there that are here, and they are not reincarnate. That is a false doctrine taught by the adversary, because reincarnation is the false doctrine to the true doctrine of multiple creations but they are multiple creation or multiple probation people that's why they have the intelligence they do that's why they know how to manipulate my that's why they have been well schooled by the adversary for thousands of years mm -hmm. i know what you're saying so. is true julie and i know that's going to be uncomfortable for some people to hear but be patient if you don't understand that just stick it on a shelf for a little while there's going to be more to come on that right there's all kinds of stuff out there on conspiracy theories. They're the ones that are planting it. They're the ones putting more and more in our face. The Middle Earth theories and all kinds of stuff. Some people are like, no, 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 it's not real. I'm here to tell you, that's a real theory. There's Middle Earth. I'm also here to tell you that aliens are real. And shapeshifters are real. And translated beings are real. And there's stuff that you can look into. You want to look into some interesting stuff, look up Laura Eisenhower. She is a light person. She has a lot of darks that come on her show, but she is absolutely brilliant. She's getting her information from somewhere. She doesn't have the fullness of the gospel and the truth. She is Eisenhower's granddaughter, and she has really put herself out there. Now, that's some stuff, you know, when I when I told my husband about Laura Eisenhower, I sent him a video. And uh, he said, D don't tell anybody this, that people already think you're weird enough. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, draconians and aliens and... You know, the Aryans. I mean, it's, it's all tied in to World War One, World War II, um, Social Security, the banking system, the global elites. And we have global elites working in conjunction with some of our elites in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They're in every organization, you guys. Mm -hmm. At this point in time, on the history of this earth, we are not going to get away from having darks in any organization. They're, they're all over. You're going to feel surrounded and you'll start looking around and keep, try to keep from being paranoid and wondering how many darks are surrounding you if you're light. <laughs> yeah, that's really true. And, you know, it shouldn't be that big of a surprise, should it, Julie? I mean, it's a scriptural pattern. Anybody who reads the Book of Mormon knows how the Nephites yeah. and the church then was um, infiltrated by Gadianton and robbers. And so those patterns, I just don't understand why we think we're exempt from that today, you know? Well, how many times have we heard the Book of Mormon was written for our day and its types and shadows? Do people think they can pick and choose what type of shadow is going to apply to what we're doing right now? Right. 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 Exactly. I mean, I'll put it this way. If you have a layman and Lemuel in your family and, and you know, Lehi was prophesying and having dreams and visions as was Nephi and Sam was light. If I just said to you, layman and Lemuel were, were you know, infiltrating <laughs> Nephi's family, but it was for the Lord's purposes and for our future teaching. All of a sudden, people are going to start putting together, and they'll be like, no wonder so-and-so has always hated me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the darks can tell who the lights are on a subconscious level, even if they don't consciously know. And then the entities and unclean spirits that possess or attach to those dark spirits that have made contracts or whatever else also know who the light spirits are that surround you. Right. I can be in the grocery store, walk by and smile at someone and see a guy that's possessed, and he will give me a dirty look. It's happened to me more times than I can mm -hmm, tell you. Mm -hmm. And I've done nothing other than just like walk by. 
but like the demons that are inside of him recognize me and recognize the light and they will like look at me like they want to kill me yeah it's, the, it's weird you guys start paying attention to that it's weird it's you know, ever drive by and all of a sudden out of nowhere somebody flips you off and you're like, what was that about? What did I do? <laughs> Maybe it's never happened to you guys, but it's happened to me a bunch. And I'm like, I'm, I didn't even do anything. <laughs> or that whole feeling of like, sorry, I, I'm breathing the air. Stole the air you should have been breathing, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Look at the trolls. When you guys are on Facebook or other social media, when you're on these online sites and you see people who are hating on me but you know that i'm speaking truth ask yourself why are so many people trying to hate on julie Rowe? what do they know that i don't know about julie Rowe or this mission of the gathering that's not my ego you guys that's me testifying to you of truth because i know who i was i know who i am i know who i will be therefore it's clear to me why some random guy on the internet would spew hate hate stuff about me when he's never met me right mm -hmm. mind you most of these people have never read the books they've never listened to the podcast either the ones that have listen so they can find all of the things that they want to use to attack right who is the great accuser it's the adversary when you find somebody who is doing accusations that are unmerited with no um nothing to back it totally the adversary I stand by the fact that I was told there was going to be an intermittent earthquake. I have never, ever explained why I thought that, why I still think it could happen, but now I think it might not. That would be a fun podcast we could do. Maybe we'll talk more about that later, but um, I have been told very clearly lately that the saints have been warned. They had five years of warnings. Hmm. And I'm not so sure that they're going to get another warning with Wasatch Earthquake now. I think some things have shifted, Eric. Maybe we'll just talk about it right now. I think some things have shifted. Mm -hmm. We may or may not have an earthquake. When I asked the Lord earlier today, are we are we having a Wasatch Earthquake? He said, uh... And I also know that sometimes they don't tell us stuff because this is war, spiritual war on the other side of the belt, and they don't want me to know because maybe they know I'm going to tell somebody and it's like we shouldn't we shouldn't know what's going on over here because things are heating up so much mm -hmm. yeah. but it wouldn't surprise me one bit if we had a call out in the spring no earthquake warning at all I'm not saying we will I'm saying it wouldn't surprise me we could have a call out in the spring of 2020 yeah I like the idea of there being a dynamic plan a plan that can change based on agency it is totally based on agency my agency your agency the, you know? And the very groups that you've been talking about, those dark groups and the things that they're doing too, I suppose, could affect it yes. in some ways. Yeah, they're very strategic in what they do, and so is the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And Elohim, I've come to see, is part of involved in um, yes. countering, I guess, the, the dark plans of mortals. And, and right. um, yeah, yeah. So what's interesting is one of the things Laura Eisenhower and some other people on the internet talk about, and I haven't really done any research, I've only heard a couple of her videos, but... Um, they talk about the Elohim Wars. You guys, those are real. I remember them. The Elohim real, the Elohim Wars are still going on. When they talk about the Elohim Wars, what they're talking about is past stuff when Lucifer was cast out, right along with Draconians and others. But that's real, and it's still continuing. Those wars are still continuing. I don't know. We live very exciting times, right? Right. The good news is at some point in time we're going to ascend to a higher level and, la and layered vibration. This earth is going to go from being very dark on a low celestial level to terrestrial. We're just going to go through some growing pains. Right. I wish I could snap my fingers and make it happen today. <laughs> wave a magic wand. Yeah, no kidding. Um, Ju well, Julie, any other groups or any other dark uh, efforts and agendas out there that you want to expose? Well, there's there's groups that are secretly living, um, all just flat out polygamy or or polyandry that are claiming truth. They're claiming that they are beginning the church, of the firstborn. They quote scripture related to um, in the scriptures where it talks about in the last days and tribulations that seven women will cling to one man. There's lots of reasons why seven women are going to cling to one man. It's not necessarily because those men are righteous. <laughs> Right. Well, or that they're supposed to be living that law. And if some you, of them are doing it because they're offering their bodies because it's the only way they get food. 
Right. But but in the context, I just have to point out that's Isaiah chapter 6. And if you look at the context of that, it's pr- it's really clearly about the tribulations. And, it, yeah. and he's the prophet that talks about how many people are going to be wiped off the earth and more than anyone else. Six, six references in Isaiah are yeah. made to the great numbers of people that are going to be destroyed in the last days. So... Yeah. So what I find interesting is we have about 66 percent darks on the planet right now. From what, from what the Lord's telling me, about 66 percent dark is our ratio, give or take I don't know several million. Uh, for every light that comes or dies, a darker light comes. So like, if we're at that point, they'll let you know the level of darkness. And don't you find that interesting that at least two thirds of the planet is going to go to the other side of the veil? Now, those aren't lights or darks, all of them, right? Just because somebody dies doesn't mean that, that a dark is taken off the planet. It just means that we're going to have a huge shift on what goes on in this planet. And I look at um, death as, depending on who you are and what side you work with, a, a, a gift. It means you graduated from your mortal probation. If you work for the life side, you've graduated, you get to go on to the next level of eternal progression. And even if you're on the dark side, you still get a chance to come back and try and do it again or improve or break contracts or whatever. So I don't look at death the same way I used to. I used to get depressed at seeing what was going to happen on the planet to loved ones that I know. Um, I still am working through the grief of what I see coming with people close to me. And, and even just, you know, trafficking situations and everything, all this darkness, the Lord is continuing to shift my energy with a greater understanding of, it's not a bad thing if somebody dies. This is actually, you know, a tender mercy on several levels. So. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, other groups, let's see. Well, there's groups in Colorado, there's groups in Canab, there's groups in Arizona. You know, you have a lot of light people in Arizona and then anywhere you can see that there's light you're going to be surrounded or infiltrated by dark Hmm. either they and on both sides of the veil so like you have the what they call energy vampires people that want to use and abuse and suck your energy they'll try to suck your life force your creative powers all kinds of stuff so um I I really want to name names and of different groups and of different people and I I can't do it but just know, pay attention, you guys, when you're contacted by some of these. The other thing I want to say is the Church of the Firstborn is started by Christ himself and Enoch. They will lay hands on the heads of those who will start it, and they will come in person, not in spirit. So if you have a spirit that's coming to you or somebody else that you know, claiming that they've started the Church of the Firstborn because Christ came and gave them a blessing and told them that they are going to start the Church of the Firstborn or that they'd become a part of it, that's a false message. Mm-hmm. Church of the Firstborn has not officially started with those individuals, and they're being deceived. And next thing you know, all of a sudden they have special priesthood powers, priesthood keys they're getting, and all kinds of stuff. That's just not the case. That's not the case. And if you have some random guy in your ward coming to you saying, you know, Joseph Smith came, and and I say this because these are real examples of people, clients that I've worked with that have asked me these questions because people they know that have approached them, or these people have approached me personally, claiming certain gifts have been given or whatever. Now, there are exceptions. I do know of a few cases where Peter, James, and John, or somebody else from the other side of the mill, um, came and gave information, but that is different than saying you know I give you the keys of priesthood authority so that you can go start the church of the firstborn because I, I I know how that's supposed to go down and it's not going to come down from some guy in your ward or some lady in, in Napa Idaho or somebody in Manti Utah or somebody who's quote unquote connected and does projects with the church and they know who I am and they know who they know who they are, and they listen to my podcast. They know I'm talking about them. Yeah. You know, Julie, what it's doing... I want to make it very clear on both sides of the veil that I'm not associated with them, and I will never be associated with them. Yeah. Yeah. 
what this discussion's doing for me is because uh, I haven't been fully aware of these groups and haven't really heard much about them to be honest but mm-hmm. I I do understand now that I've had a little time to look into things that they are real they exist they're they really and a lot of their claims are similar it just shows mm-hmm it tells me that Satan's behind this and, and he must be mm-hmm. awfully threatened if he's, you know, trying right. to create deception versions of the truth. Right. Right. So like, so they're doing it with non-members too. When we were in Arizona, my husband worked with this guy who had these amazing spiritual gifts. The first time I met him, I recognized him. I knew right away it was dark and he recognized me and we would have these silent mind conversations back and forth. Went to dinner with he and his wife a couple of times went to their house one time and oh my gosh you know what came out in that year and a half because he was he was buddying up to my husband now I can thank this guy for being friends with my husband at work he was actually one of my husband's closer friends because my husband woke up to the fact that his wife wasn't just crazy because he met this guy who was over the 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 brokerage stuff and and analyzed stocks all day long he was super logical and male and could see spirits like Jeff's wife could and could hear spirits and had visitations and all kinds of stuff. And he's the one that convinced my husband I wasn't crazy because, you know, I'm not just this emotional woman with a vivid imagination. Because he meets this guy who doesn't fit anything like me, and he's saying the same stuff. And you know what he tells my husband and me? What? Gabriel visits him regularly. We were at dinner one time, and he says, there's a man in purple standing behind you. And I said, I know he is. And I had a conversation with this guy. You know who Man in Purple was? A guy that has harassed me, who's Satan's right-hand man, that's been following me around my entire probation. He came to the restaurant because he works, this guy that my husband worked with, he worked with him. They were on the dark side together. And they, this guy says to me, the mortal says to me, he wants you to know there's nothing to be afraid of. And I said, I'm not afraid. But I knew who he was. And because of things like that, I got more clarity and understanding and discerning what the adversary was up to. So you know what he would do? This guy would purposely... He'd try to hug me so he could get my energy and read my energy. And he's discerning who I am. I'm discerning him. And it was who he is. And it's very clear we're on opposing sides. After a year and a half of this, one of the last conversations he has with my husband, he confesses to my husband that this is sound. This is going to sound wild to you guys, but this is legitimately what happened. That he and his wife had visitors, some shapeshifters from the other side of the veil that came to visit them that promised them that they could show them a beautiful paradisical world if they would just sign these contracts, yada, 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 whatever he wanted them to do. They couldn't bring their daughter with them and they couldn't be married if they went to that planet, but they could do it. He had been astral projecting. They'd been coming for for years, teaching him how to astral project, do all kinds of things, giving him gifts and all kinds of stuff. And they led him up to the point where he had to choose if he wanted to stay married to his wife. They could go to the world together but not be married. And they couldn't take their 14-year-old daughter. You guys, this is a legit story of a non-LDS member of the church who you would never know was doing this stuff. Right? Worked worked in a building that sold annuities. How Mm. weird is that? Mm. And we moved to Arizona. My husband was at that job for just 18 months. But that's the guy that he met who buttered up to him as his, his quote-unquote best friend at work. Weird, right? And it happened. In the year and a half, I wrote my first two books and started doing energy work. Mm, interesting. If that happened to me with my husband in Arizona, what else is going on throughout the church and anywhere else on this planet that people aren't awakened to? Mm-hmm. Guys, this stuff is real. Mm-hmm. Well, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling some of your listeners are a little concerned about your use of, you know, light and dark people. Right. So nobody's entirely, well, they're not entirely dark unless they're a demon. There's always light of some degree, a varying degree within them, especially here on the planet. Yeah, that's a good summary. And I've come to see that it has more to do with their intentions, maybe even pre-mortal yeah. covenants and intentions. Even yeah. Maybe they made an oath with um, with someone on the dark side over there that they would go after someone of the light here just to kind of pull them down to you know nip at their yeah. heels throughout their life and and yeah. and I've seen that I know what you're talking about with family members and and stuff that it seems to me that I don't know my explanation for all that Julia is Lehi said it there's opposition in all things and so 
Um, I've come to see that where the Lord allows, you know, a few lights in a family, he'll, he'll bring in some people with some dark contracts to kind of balance things out to give Satan his fair chance at opposition, which gives us um, all an opportunity to grow and progress, right? So it's just that right. balance, eternal balance. Right. Well, you know, the first time I heard somebody actually say, oh, so-and-so's dark, it was people that called me dark. And I was like, I'm not dark. Where are they getting this idea from? You know? Mm. And uh, the adversary loves to tell somebody, don't trust them, they're dark. Well, I will say, and I'll put this out to the universe, every single one of us can repent, every single one of us can come to the light. We invite those who are ready and willing to go to the light right now. And we can break those contracts, destroy the contracts, and go into the light. Get rid of the curse energy and contracts or whatever it is people have done on either side of the veil. Mm. Mm-hmm. The atonement is real and infinite and an eternal, eternal atonement. Christ atoned because he knew all this was going to happen. And it's not too late. You know, and Satan has convinced people on both sides of the veil that they're no good, that they have to serve him forever, that they're just stuck in bondage, that they can't release the chains, that they're never going to, right? It's a load of crap. It totally is. So I just want to witness and testify to you guys that if you just back up the mo- the motives right now some people are going to be like well how do we know she's not working for the dark side she could, she could be covert she could be like a double agent you know working for the dark side well i'll just i'll just tell you this much like dark side they don't if they pretend to witness and testify of christ you can feel it in their voice you can hear it in their tone so pay attention to the tone that they use and the voice fluctuation and how um, clear that sounds when you hear it. The more you learn to discern, the better you are at, at discerning spirits on both sides of the veil, mm-hmm. including the voice. Mm-hmm. Now, the dark side's really crafty at mimicking light. They have millions of fake Christs on the other side of the veil and Joseph Smith, and apparently they have some of me, right? You can, you can imagine that in the last world of the last days on the final earth of this eternal, they've had a long time to master and manipulate and mimic everything from, I mean, we do most of our, most of our communicating through nonverbal. And so they've gotten really good, but you can be too. You guys learned a lot about mortality before you came to earth you learned how to discern it's just that now you're in school hands on and you just don't remember you know how to tell a liar how to tell a true messenger how to tell if somebody is actually speaking truth or making something up and some of these people are really really good Mm -hmm. but what does it benefit me exposing any darkness what what good can come of that even if I was working for Satan, if you work for Satan and you expose darkness, he will take you out because he doesn't care about people that work for him. So it serves no benefit. If you just look at the logic of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, if I even if, if I was working for the dark side and I was doing what I've been doing for five years, Satan would have taken me out. Now, he's trying to take me out because I work for the light side, but I'm telling you right now, he still almost every day comes to me and tries to promise me that I can be his queen of queens if I will work for him. Hmm. But I don't want anything to do with that because I know what that means. Being a queen for Satan is not cool, not fun. No. It's bondage and slavery and being used and abused. And he does give them power, but it comes at such a high cost. Like hmm. anybody who's involved in that right now is in sound of my voice. I promise you, if you will go to the light, you can be released from that bondage. You just have to trust in the Savior. Mm, yeah. <sighs> wow. I got <laughs> some good energy out there. That felt good. <laughs> it's good. Well, I hope it's helpful to people. I I don't know. One other form of darkness and exposing it, Julie, I, from my perspective, is the personal darkness Satan can put in our hearts and in our minds, especially in our thoughts. Right. It's something that's been frequent in my life in the last few years is... Um, his constant snipping and nipping at my thoughts and my my ego, my self-esteem and my value and my to the plan and to the Lord and 
It's just, yeah. you know, it's a real pervasive sort of, um, I guess, war strategy on Satan's part. And so I know that's right. another thing that we can end. Right. Well, I've had a lot of people, a lot of clients at least say, oh, you know your mission. I just wish I knew my mission. Da, 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 da. And they're getting beat up by the adversary thinking they don't know their mission. Mm-hmm. You guys, you're living your mission right now. Whatever it is you're doing, you're living it. And that doesn't mean there's not more to it. I don't know my full mission either. I just know what I'm doing now, and I've been shown some more of what I need to do or will do. But there's lots of missing pieces to the puzzle there for me still. Mm. So I don't want people, I have a lot of people that assume that they think that if you're visionary, it's all laid out for you. You don't take, it doesn't take any faith. Or if you have hearing gifts, it's easy. It doesn't get easier, guys. It gets harder. The more you know, the more you understand, the more you see, the more you hear, the more you feel it gets harder, not easier. Mm -hmm. So don't deceive yourself in thinking that it's a cakewalk once you know what your mission is or you think you know what your mission is. It gets harder. Trust in the Lord's plan. Trust where you are right now and trust that you're on track for where you need to be. And if you're off track, listen to that inner voice and to the spirit that says, hey, you need to correct this. You need to repent in this area so you can get back on track. Mm, That's absolutely true. Right? If people are repenting every day, then they'll be on track with wherever they need to be at whatever pace they're going to be. They don't need to beat themselves up and they don't need to, they don't need to freak out that their kids are rebelling or their spouse is, is having a hard time. Right. You just trust in the plan, trust in the process and trust, trust the Lord. Yeah, that's really well said. And, and that repentance thing is key, Julie, I've learned. I mean, if, if you are constantly clearing and repenting, then what it's really doing is, is minimizing your um, potential to be deceived by the adversary, right? It's it's right. like it helps you stay in tune more with the light, those of the light who are prompting us on the other side. So, yeah, yeah, that's big. And with that, you know, I've got people that have called me to repentance online and through email and whatever, and I just want you to hear me say, I know who I am. I know at least a portion of my mission and where I am. I repent every day, multiple times a day throughout the day. I know my standing before the Lord. I have no shame in this. I have calm in my heart. And no matter what anybody says to judge me, falsely or whatever else, or falsely accuse, I know who I am. I know I know that I'm in good standing with the Lord. And I'm not deceived in that because I know how to check myself and I do it all day long. And if people had any idea how often I repent, I think they would be like, um, okay, she's fine. Right. Because I don't wait. I don't wait to repent. I do it throughout the day, all day long. Yeah. Well, and one thing that I've observed in the judgment coming from many, many of your critics is superficial, petty judgments. It's the tone of your voice. It's the clothes. It's the things you say. You know, it's yeah. there. It's just all superficial judgment. And, I, and it's like we forget some of the most basic things the Savior said sometimes. He doesn't look on the outward appearance. He looks at the heart. Right. And only he knows that about you or me you or know, any of us. I look at it like the same kind of people that are criticizing Joseph Smith. And some of those are doing the same things to Joseph Smith even still. Right? How long ago did he live? And he, and he still gets falsely judged. Mm-hmm. We got people that are breaking off from the church because of Joseph Smith. He's amazing. He's one of the, the greatest generals on the other side of the veil leading these armies. I just want to tell him thank you for his work and his assistance and everything he does and everything he continues to help me with because he is helping me on my mission. And I will tell you this much. If if Joseph Smith, as the prophet of this restoration, can be as human as he was and is when he served his mission, then I think people should cut me some slack because I'm not Joseph Smith. And look what he did. Right. But even still, people expected him to be perfect. Mm-hmm. That's a false belief, you guys. Mm-hmm. As mortals, we will never be perfect. I'm not perfect. I don't I don't propose to be perfect, but I am doing the best I can with the missions that's been given me as I've come to understand it. And I understand more today than I did yesterday. Mm-hmm. So that's where I just give it all to the Lord. And I say, I'm sorry, I'm not perfect. I'm an imperfect servant. And you know what he says to me? Mm-hmm. What I care about is that you have a broken heart and contrite spirit and that you're humble, Julie. Mm-hmm. And then I'll have those people that are like, well, she's not humble. And I said, well, go ahead and judge me. I care what the Lord says about me. And that's what you guys should care about, too. What's your standing with the Lord? Where are you? Where's your heart? He looks on the heart. And I can't emphasize that enough. He looks on the heart. And where you have impure energy, that's where you know you need to clear the heart out. If you're judging me or anybody else, 
and you're being jealous or petty or whatever, that's on you. That's not on me. And I hope that you will go to the Lord and you will get your own answers and do what I've said all along, which is focus on where you are and what you need to do and make sure you're not one of those percentages that's going to get talked into for these apostate groups or anything else. Make sure you're on the Lord's side, not the adversary side, whether you're on this side of the veil or the other side of the veil. Thanks, Julie. All right. That's where we find hope. That's where we find peace. That's where we find satisfaction. And ultimately where we find salvation and hopefully exaltation. And, um, and it doesn't matter what I say. It's on them at the end of the day, right? Yeah. So. All right. That was an airful. <laughs> Or in my case, a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. Julie, I'm grateful you're willing to put yourself out there and expose uh, the wickedness that's out there and, and also the, some of the truths that are out there. So thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Well, you know, Eric, you and I both, we get punished for this. The adversary doesn't waste much time before we pay for it. And um, But I know that pattern too. And what that lets me know is that we did something good today. Mm -hmm. And so I anticipate that, you know, things are going to get exciting again in the next couple hours. But <laughs> with that, I just want to put my promise out there to each of you that we'll continue to do these podcasts in fact the good news is, is that in celebration of independence day tomorrow by the time this podcast goes out you guys will some of you have already heard about it but in celebration of the fourth of july independence day i'd like to thank all of the troops light warriors on both sides of the veil and in celebration of that in rallying the troops in rallying the troops we have re-released all the podcasts with the exception of podcast one through 20 and 49a so those are all on YouTube now. We will not be putting any podcasts on Podomatic because, quite frankly, I was paying to put stuff on Podomatic to have the bandwidth because we had such a following. And there's really no need for it. People can go to YouTube if they want and look up the podcasts there. So spread the word. All the podcasts are back up. This one will be released in a couple of days. Today's July 3rd. We hope to have it out by maybe the 5th or the 6th. And that's in celebration of all the light warriors on both sides of the veil. Thank you guys so much for the work that you do. Sending my love wherever you are.